Alright, so today I'm here with Grandma Kaiba from Golf Eddie Dean. He's the secretary. Thank you for taking your time out to talk to me, Graham. No problem, Darren. The most famous Hibs fan in the world right now. It's it's a pleasure to speak to you. No, oh, thank you. I've just got ten questions to ask you. Okay. Uh, the first one is, what got you involved with football and the club? Well, I've always loved football. I've always been a football fan. And when my eldest son started playing football, a new club started up in the town, Galadine Junior Football Club. And uh, I volunteered to help out and uh, I was given the role of secretary at the junior football team. And I did that, well actually right up until about last year, I, was, I, I remained the registration secretary of the junior team. So I got involved th through junior primary school football first of all. And then in 2013, there was a merger here at Netherdale between Gala Ferry Dean and Gala Rovers to create a new entity, Gala Ferry Dean Rovers, and I was asked if I would be the secretary for that. So for the last six years, I've been secretary here at Netherdale of a Holland League club and everything that that involves. So that's how I, uh, how I started. Um, the second one is, well, what made you support heart? Hearts for my sins, yeah, I'm a Hearts fan. Uh, I was born in Edinburgh. Uh, my family's originally from Glasgow. My dad's side of the family were all Clyde fans and my mum's were all Patrick Thistle. So, uh, kindly, neither side made me be either a Clyde or Patrick Thistle fan. And when I was old enough to choose for myself, a band, I don't know, primary one. Uh, uh, in 1974, it was Hearts centenary year. And I remember a photograph of them in the paper and that they were from Edinburgh and I was born in Edinburgh and I literally just started supporting them uh, from then on and it's uh, they've either been the best thing in my life or the bane of my life for, for most of the intervening time since. Can you tell me about the community engagement uh, programme at Gulf Eddie's in Rover? Yeah, well, one of the things that we wanted to do when we merged the two adult football clubs here at Gala was to create something much bigger. This is a town that's renowned for being a rugby town, not so much a football town, and we wanted to try and change that. We felt there was a great deal of potential here. We have a 3G surface out there at Netherdale, and that meant that uh, getting rid of the grass pitch gave us opportunities to have football played on the park seven days a week rather than just one or two days and it getting churned up and muddy. So what we tried to do was create something, a community engagement programme that meant that anybody who was interested in football in Gala, whether as a player or a spectator or a volunteer or whatever, they could become involved. And so now we've got about 17 teams over 300 players in, in the pathway here. We have a ladies team, as you know, a disability team. We have a walking football team. We have our first team in the Lowland League, an amateur team. And then we have a, our academy set up, a youth and junior set up, which uh, covers kids from primary one all the way through to under 16 and 17. And we're always looking to expand that community programme. We also do a lot of work with local charities. We we try and raise the profile of local campaigns and things like that. So we've won a number of awards for the community engagement campaign from the Lowland League and the SFA. They, they award money each year. Uh, we won Club of the Year from Metric and Lauderdale Sports uh, Council in 2015 and 16. So we're really proud of the community engagement program here and we think there is a place with over 100 volunteers on top of over 300 players. We think literally, if you're interested in football and you want to get involved, then you can do that at Gala Ferry Dean Rovers. What inspires you? Well, seeing when you see the amount of kids that we've got involved here, when you see the amount that we involve the community here, that inspires me. Of course, I want the first team to do well, that's really important. But the fact we've grown to be such a big community organisation, that really inspires me. And it's uh, it's been brilliant to be part of that. What goals have you achieved at the club? And personal? Yeah, well, we're now in the sixth season of being a team in the Scottish Lowland League, 
which is a considerable achievement. We started off, we were one of the lowest ranked teams that went into the Lowland League. It's an incredibly difficult league. Uh, there's a lot of teams, a lot of non-league teams all across Scotland would like to be in our position. So the fact that we've consolidated, stayed in this league, and uh, we're looking to build on that and have a push for the top half next season, we think we've got a really good side here. Potentially we can, we can kick on. So we've achieved that goal. We've achieved the goals of gaining and maintaining an SFA licence. And I suppose the, the main goal was to create the community club that we've created here. And I think that's been probably our biggest achievement. Why has it only been part of the disability squad? Well, it's been a, a great journey with the disability squad. We took over from Border Sports and Leisure Trust, the disability squad that you yourself were involved in uh, about three years ago now. And it's been one of the most successful parts of the community engagement programme, I think. It's uh, one of the most rewarding things to be involved with. As you know, this season they're doing really well in the, in the league and in the Scottish Cup. However, for us, it's not just about the results. It's about creating a group, uh, uh, ending social isolation and exclusion and stuff like that. The Disability Squad's been a, a brilliant part of that and I'm really pleased that I've been involved in that journey so far. What was it like having me part of the disability team? Well, it was really difficult, you were really difficult, you were one of those players that demanded loads of money and all that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kidding. No, it was a pleasure, you were a pleasure to work with. Uh, we had a lot of great times uh, at tournaments and, and stuff like that and so uh, we were all really sorry when you, when you had your stroke, it means at the minute you're confined to a wheelchair but we were determined as a club to make sure you felt involved and still part of the squad and part of the team and that's what we've tried to do, make you feel uh, a sense of belonging here at Gallifrey and Indian Rovers, Darren. What would you like to achieve at the club? Well, I suppose the number one goal of the club would be to get into the Scottish Professional Leagues. That's really what we would like to do, uh, win some trophies. We've been very successful in establishing a base and a foundation here and we would really want to kick on, get into those leagues. Because I think, uh, when I look at the Scottish Leagues just now, Darren, there's about a dozen teams that come from towns smaller than Gala Shields. So I know that there's potential here for this club to be playing in the Scottish Leagues and uh, hopefully one day we'll achieve that. What other team would you support other than Hearts, if you had to choose? <laughs> well, I don't know, that's a difficult one. There's another team in Edinburgh, isn't there? Yeah. Edinburgh City, I suppose I could go and support them. But no, I can't imagine in supporting a, a team other than, than Hearts and uh, of course Gallifrey Dean Rovers. Just now I spot my time between Hearts and Gallifrey Dean Rovers. I suppose if anything was to happen uh, up the road at Tyne Castle, I'd become a uh, full-time Gallifrey Dean Rovers fan. Um, where would you like to see yourself in five years' time? Uh, we can have a fairy de Rovers in the Scottish League, so I really hope that we can go on and kick on and, and achieve that. Uh, and whether or not I'm still part of the, the, the kind of the committee here in my role as secretary, that doesn't really matter. There's a, a huge number of volunteers and people who help out here, and this club's in uh, good hands going forward. And I hope, uh, as I say, to, to see them in the Scottish Leagues one day. How long are you planning on staying at the club? Well, my role as secretary, I'm finishing this summer. Uh, that will have been six years, which is quite long enough, I think, uh, for the club to have put up with me and me to put up with the club. But I'll continue in a volunteer role in the background, helping out. We've got a big project on at the minute with the, the stand being refurbished here, the Historic Scotland Day listed stand at Netherdale. So I'm still going to be part of that and I'll still be... Uh, helping in the background. I just won't be in uh, such a prominent role anymore. But uh, I look forward to some time off uh, away from the front line of this club. And I guess you'll, after the role is at the very end for you, will you still continue taking the boys up in the uh, minibus? Oh yeah, I'm that, that's <coughs> probably my most important role actually, never mind secretary of the football team, it's uh, the minibus driver for the disability squad as they play their tournaments at, uh, at Grangemouth oh, at Little Care. So yeah, I'll, I'll, 
I'll still be doing that and still be stopping off for uh, takeaways at uh, Burger King and KFC at Straight In. Why do the Galapiri Dean Disability Squad not do two minutes till meal? Well, we would like to do that. The reason at the minute that the tournaments are held at Whittle Cares, which as you know is quite a big football s uh, facility in central Scotland, I think the, because there's teams come from all over Scotland, the SFA like the fact that it's somewhere central in the central belt of Scotland, and that's why everybody travels to there. But we would love to have a tournament down here in the future, and it's maybe something that we should try and look at doing within the next year or so. Yeah, I'm sure that would get fun for the stands. If we had a tournament, well, listen, we're up for anything that we could uh, help raise money for the stand. But more, more importantly, just to have a disability tournament down here would be really good, I think. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time for talking to me. Much appreciated. No bother, Darren, any time. Thank you. Thank you.